Hello, and welcome to downtown. I'm your host, Robbie Haig. Thank you for being here with us once again. This morning, I'm speaking with Stephen Ixaris, and I am so pleased to have met him uh, somewhere on the uh, streets of Plymouth. And here we are. Yes, it's great to see you again. It was actually on the rooftop in Plymouth yes, at the it town was. hall, and uh, <laughs> I remember talking with you, and mm -hmm. and the view was amazing. And yeah. you said we would do it, and here we are. And here I love we it. are. Yeah. Thanks for having well, me. Thank you for being here. My honor. How long have you been at your new job, Steve? Oh boy, oh, I, I didn't even say that you were state rep. I am. <laughs> but I think all of all of the Cape knows that. Oh, uh, I, I I'm honored to be your state representative in the fifth Barnstable district, which uh, covers half of Barnstable, all of Sandwich, half of Bourne, and some of Plymouth, and it's Excellent. you know thirty five thousand people, and wow. uh, a lot of issues and a lot of good and I love it I'm honored to do it but how long have I been doing it I started on January 6th sworn wow. in so it's been you know 10 11 months and, and you uh, haven't stopped running yet I haven't I love it it's it's an incredible experience um, you know policing I was a police officer for 40 years and I loved that job I am uh, proud to be a police officer I got to work with heroes every day in Yarmouth and uh, now to keep serving, it's, I look at it, it really it's just another way to serve. And it's, it's bigger, you know, policing is, is very important and, and that's, I know a lot about that and how to make that better actually, which is great timing. Yeah. But uh, there's a whole more world to, you know, the Commonwealth. We have seven million people and I'm one of 200 elected officials wow. fortunate to serve. And uh, I call us the fighting fifth Barnstable district. <laughs> and we, you know, we fight for things that we need. And there's so many things that we need. And uh, it's a really an honor to serve and learn about all the issues, wastewater, drinking water, housing. There's so many issues. And it uh, sounds like you're giving back a great deal. That's my job. And I love it. So thank you. Talk to me about the uh, 6A police station that is now going to be used for veteran services. Yes, great question. That uh, was the police station in Sandwich for so many years. Fortunately, they moved out into a beautiful new building. So the old building sits there. And ever since COVID started, every Tuesday between 10 and 12, myself and a bunch of volunteers have been going there. We get 50 pound boxes of food from Joint Base Cape Cod on the, at the warehouse. Mm -hmm. And we truck them over to the police station and we've been doing it, you know, since March of 2020, every Tuesday, summer, winter, fall, all wow. volunteers. And you hand out a box of food to veterans and military families. Uh, and really, if anyone needed something, we'll find a way to get it to them. There's so much food in the system. No one should be hungry, and we, when we take that serious. So that's where we've been doing it. And then the town made an agreement with the foundation that I volunteer for, the Massachusetts Military Support Foundation, which is at Joint Base Cape Cod, that that's going to become a, we call it an empowerment center, where military families and veterans can go inside once it gets refurbished and shop for food, medicine, clothes, and they'll walk out with whatever they need at no cost. It's all free. And then upstairs will be services, such as maybe mental health or any issues that they're having. We have that same type of building at the base already for the last four years. Uh, but a lot of people can't get on the base. So the oh, idea okay. is to duplicate it in Sandwich, make it available to everybody from Provincetown to to Wareham, you know, anywhere, Plymouth. If you are a military family, you need help, you come to us wow. and we will help you. I would like to know about your two puppies here. Oh, yes, thank you. Yeah, that's why I, I chose to run for office. Um, you know, I had served for 40 years, which is a long time. Yes, and it is. Uh, 
proud every minute from a, you know, a summer cop with a mustache and tinted glasses <laughs> and a full head of hair back in the 70s, right? That's how I started. You know, I came from New Bedford to Sandwich, to live in Sandwich with my aunt, uh, Froso, God bless her. She let me live with her while I went to school at Cape Cod Community College and got three degrees, you know, associates, uh, bachelor's, master's, became a police officer, loved it. But on uh, April 12, 2018, I sent a team of seven police officers on a mission from my office. And, uh, you know, a horrible thing happened. Uh, my officer, Sean Gannon, was shot and killed by a evil person that had 125 prior charges. He was oh selling, selling drugs. He had guns. And when the police went to uh, try to find him, he ambushed the police. He shot my officer in the head, Sean, and he shot the dog, Nero, in the head. And I heard them screaming on the radio, and, uh, you know, that, that affected my life, and all of us on Cape yes. Cod and all over. And How I was, could it not? It, it, correct, and it should. A young 32-year-old oh. handsome police officer married, murdered by a criminal. And uh, we were there when that criminal finally gave up. He was arrested, and uh, I'm glad to say three and a half years later, uh, in September, he was found guilty, finally, of murder, and he's in prison for the rest of his life where he yeah. belongs. Yes. But part of that story was Nero being shot. Sean's mm -hmm. partner went to try to save him, and the, the man shot Nero, and he was trapped in that house with the murderer for three hours before we could get the murderer to give up and uh, I'll never forget um, a police officer carrying Nero out of the house, and he was still alive, but he was bleeding to death, and he was trying to breathe. And all the EMTs and all the paramedics and all the ambulances that were there, no one would or could help Nero, because in Massachusetts, an EMT or a paramedic is not allowed to help an animal. He's not a veterinarian and not allowed to put him in the ambulance. Oh my goodness. And I stood oh. there and saw it and uh, oh. broke my heart. But we took that dog and we put him in the back of a police cruiser. And uh, a doctor, Dr. Khan, who was with the SWAT team from Cape Cod Hospital, kept his airway open. And my friend, Peter McClellan, who raised Nero when he was a puppy, held him and they drove as fast as they could to the nearest veterinary hospital. And Nero lived. The police officers slept with him for six days. They guarded him. They slept in the cage. And I was there when Nero came out of the building in Bourne at the veterinary clinic underneath the bridge a week later. We had brought Sean's cruiser to the scene. And I was standing there when Nero came out, uh, stitches, skinny, because he hadn't eaten. And he walked out and he kept looking for Sean. Wow. And that, That's about as heavy as life can get. And I've seen it before because, uh, you know, my own son Nicholas was killed in war, and I know what it's like to lose a child. And now Mr. and Mrs. Gannon had lost their son, and um, Nero lived, and now lives with uh, Sean's wife. But my mission uh, from that day on was to, you know, earn the right to be a state representative and pass a bill called the Nero Bill. And we, in uh, Nero's memory, my fiance Denise, who was Sean's nurse in that really? hospital room, tried wow. to save him. She created the Nero Pup. And, uh, we sold about 5,000 of these, really? and we built, we built the Sean Gannon Memorial Training Center with a million dollars of people's donated money. That just got opened in October. And sadly, uh, my fear was that it would happen again, and the law has not changed yet. It's close. Mm -hmm. But it is close. It is close, but this is, this is canine kit. So you know kit. it's going to happen. It's going to happen because it has to, and I'll never stop. Very good. Very but good. this is canine kit. And in June of this year, same thing, a, a evil person shot two Braintree police officers. 
And when Nero, uh, when Kit went to their rescue, he was murdered. And uh, he gave his life um, saving the police officers. Wow. And, uh, and they couldn't help uh, K-9 Kit either. So it pushes us to, to make it happen. And the Senate, yeah. Senator Moran, who's our senator, and all the senators voted recently 38 to 0. Excellent. Which is excellent. And now it's in the House. And that's where I work, and we're going to get it done. And the words that came from you are, he gave his life. So why should we not be able to help him? Amen. These dogs, uh, dedicated dogs, they live with their handler. They go home. They, they become part of the family, and they're oh. trained to, you know, a uh, search for missing children or someone with uh, Alzheimer's who may be out in the woods. They do a lot of good work, but they are also used to help apprehend these uh, criminals, and it's dangerous. And when they're injured, uh, they deserve the right to be treated. Absolutely. And we I promise them. you we will make that happen. That's my we treat Mission. them like family in the home. Why should it change out in the battlefield? It, Amen. And most people, when they hear about it, they, they say, that's, you're right, that's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. But it's, yeah. uh, it takes a lot of work to take an idea, make it a bill, and make it a law. There are 7,000 oh, wow. bills in the State House this year, 7,000. So I sit on five committees, and we hear all the different ideas, and then they go through steps and processes, and that's democracy, and they end up with the governor, and Governor Baker and, and Lieutenant Governor Polito will make, yeah. they'll sign the bill, the Excellent. Nero bill. We just have to get it to them. Well, we'll certainly be waiting for that. Amen. And I have a dream. I see, um, I see Dara, which is Sean's beautiful wife. I see Denise and Patrick, Sean's parents. I see Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito, and I see Nero in the State House signing the bill. Wow. What a picture. Amen. So, I need to back off just a little bit. Talk to me about how you feel about the opioid crisis. Oh my God, crisis. yeah. That's another thing. Uh, I, you know, every representative, every senator has probably their their key issues, you know, and there's so many, wastewater, like we talked about, yes, drinking water, did. housing, yes. but opioid uh, addiction, substance use disorder, they call it, is, is personal to me. Um, I have that addiction in my family, so I've seen how it affects the people and, you know, the families, which many people do. And part of Nick, my son's mission that people don't know, the Marines went to Afghanistan in 2009. It's called the Summer of Decision. President Obama sent 12,000 Marines at once to Afghanistan. Uh, that's the uh, only time it happened since Vietnam. 12,000 Marines landed in Afghanistan to, to you know, defend our nation and, um, and fight the enemy. But part of it was to rid the uh, fields of opium. That's where our heroin comes from, Afghanistan and Mexico, and it comes over the border and it damages and ruins lives. So uh, Nick's mission that summer was to uh, you know, burn the fields, which the farmers there would do, uh, but the horrible thing that would happen is if they stopped growing uh, opium, they would be murdered by the Taliban. Wow. That's how powerful this drug is and the millions of dollars made. So in Afghanistan, uh, they grow this, this, you know, plant that becomes a drug that hurts so many people all over the world. But my son was there to protect the farmers, and they did. Mm -hmm. And so for me, the addiction comes full circle where wow. we, we do our best to stop it, but when it happens, uh, I'm going to do my best to help people, and we have to, we need more places, we need more behavioral health places, we need more addiction places. It's Agreed. a horrible crisis 
and we talk about, uh, you know, um, COVID, which is another whole story. But boy, people are dying every day from this horrible addiction right here on Cape Cod. Right. Um, and I don't think there are too many families that are not part of it. They, there are. It touches every family, it and does. there's a stigma to it, and we should stop that right. and just look at try to help people. So I have two bills that I filed. One is simply on um, August 31st that Massachusetts would uh, recognize uh, that as Overdose Awareness Day. That's an international day. And in Massachusetts, I'd love to see uh, every August 31st that we honor those that have addiction, that have recovered because we want them to recover, and then we remember those that lost their lives. And that's a bill that I filed and we're working on. But the, the cop in me also knows uh, we need to help them but also we need to be tougher with these drug dealers. Yes. Uh, the murder of Sean Gannon was a drug dealer. The murder of the Braintree police officer, uh, dog K-9 Kit, was a drug dealer. Uh, some of these people are violent and they need to be put in prison. So I have a bill that would say if you get arrested for selling fentanyl, remember heroin has fentanyl in it and that's what's killing yeah. people, that you do not get bail. You know, you should be held mm -hmm. until you go to court and let a judge look at your record and let a judge decide your status. Right now, if you get arrested for selling this dangerous drug by the police, which are risking their lives to do it, I know it because I've lived it, yeah. you basically go to the police station and they call the bail commissioner, who's a civilian, they, he comes to the station, you sign a piece of paper that you promise to be in court, and you pay $40 and you walk out the door. And that's what happens to 85% of these people that are arrested for selling drugs. They walk out uh, paying a $40 fee that goes that to the bail commission. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't, but that's the way it works in Massachusetts. Wow. Um, people will say, well, they're not convicted. And they're right. They're arrested for it on probable cause. but. They're killing people, sure. so they should be held at least overnight until what the judge can see them. Of doing yeah, it's wrong, and it's different. it's something that I can point out and fight for because I've seen it. And uh, they should be held. And there is a precedent: if you violate a restraining order, that's a whole other area. Domestic violence, horrible. I know that world as well. I've seen women beaten beyond recognition, and. Uh, and that person, after they're arrested and brought to the station, they walk out too. But in Massachusetts, if you violate a restraining order, you do not get bail. So it'd be the same idea as that. These special crimes that are killing and hurting people, you should be held, in my opinion, until the next sitting of the court and let the system look at you and, and deal with that. Uh, not pay $40 and walk out. No. At least an overnighter. <laughs> yes, and I think most people would agree, yeah. but we have to get that through the system, and we will. Well, I'm also looking at this lovely jacket that you have here. Talk to me about that. Yes. And we um, have socks. Yeah, it's just a little thing well, that we do. Um, you know, when we lost Nicholas, my family and I, you know, we, we you know, you get brought to your knees, and... Uh, but we got back up and we founded the Nicholas Exaros Foundation. We do Big Nick's Ride for the Fall and a motorcycle ride that comes through Sandwich. And we raise money and we give it all away to military, to scholarships, to anyone that could use it. Wow. We do it on Nick's birthday uh, in February. But besides that, we, I volunteer at the base, at Joint Base Cape Cod, you know, our neighbor. You know, that's a beautiful place, and uh, there's the Massachusetts Military Support Foundation and also the Cape Cod Military Support Foundation. We have a building there, and it's run by uh, a team of people, and I just a volunteer. But one of the things we do is we give out brand new coats, uh, brand new pairs of socks, we give out turkeys, we give out food, as we talked about. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing that goes on on the base. So I try to bring it into the community. 
So I can get socks and give it to kids, or I can get turkeys, and that's what I did on Thanksgiving. I drove around in my old Jeep, and you hand out turkeys or stuffing and try to help others. Even if you don't, sometimes people don't want to take it. Uh, no, it's okay. Like, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a token of thanks, at least. Wow. It's all very heavy. Yeah. It can be. Uh, I, I see but a lot of struggling. Wonderful. And, 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 and it's heavy, but it is wonderful, and it's a way to pay back. I truly believe in service before self. Um, and, and I'm feeling that you have many volunteers to help you. We do, and it's good when you, because there's a, so many good people, and yes. give them an, a way to help. So if you want to help, you know, you let us know, reach out to my office. You can become a volunteer in this program. Terrific. I've never drove a 26-foot refrigerated truck in my life, <laughs> but now I do. And, you know, we show you how to do things. And, and it can be simple, like we have volunteers this morning. They go to all the um, supermarkets, and they pick up all the bread and, and snacks that are going out of date. They bring it to the base, and then we hand it out, and, and we put a cake in someone's hand tonight, <laughs> and it makes them smile. Yes. And that's what we need. Yes. We need um, to smile yes. and be proud of being an American. It's the greatest nation on earth. No one should go hungry. No one should be cold. Let Agreed. us help you. Agreed. With all of that said, do you miss being a police officer? Oh, wonderful question. I do. I miss my brothers and sisters. You know, I wore a uniform every day for 40 years, uh, body armor, a handgun. Um, my son Alex is a police officer. When I left on the 40, after 40 years, like finishing 40 years, I left on December uh, uh, seventh, I think it was, or the eighth, 2019. We had a kind of a nice ceremony, and when I walked out the door, they had my son Alex standing there, and I gave him a hug, and I walked out, and he walked in the door. Oh my goodness! Yeah, he is a Yarmouth police officer, and I. So, uh, do I miss it? Yes, but this is where I belong because the police officers and the first responders, the firefighters, the nurses, they honestly need someone like me yes. in the state house fighting for them. Yes. You know, I lost Sean Gannon, I lost my own son, I'm not gonna lose another one. And, uh, yeah. and I can speak on their behalf with credibility to make sure they have really all the police and the firefighters need, all they need really is the tools and the training right. to be successful and safe. And, and I can help do that. So Very that's good. where I belong. It sounds like you are right where you belong. I it believe so, yeah. Good. And I think it was Nicholas and Sean that, yeah. that helps me be here. Wonderful. Because it's not easy to win uh, uh, and become a representative. It's, it's a lot of work. But I love it. And uh, I appreciate the people believing in me. Yeah. And it's, as we talked about before also, it's, this is a wonderful thing to do, but you have to get it out to the public Amen. and let them know what's happening. Amen. I, I can't imagine anyone not being behind you and what you're doing. Thank you, yeah, I, my heart is in the right place. Uh, it's people before politics. It's really about people being honest, having integrity. I, Every week I publish a weekly report. Oh. Every month I publish a monthly report. So today, December 1st, is when we're meeting. That'll come out. So I would encourage people to just follow my Facebook page, if you don't mind, you know, State Representative Steve Exaros. Everything is on there. Not only political stuff, but all these events Very where people good. can come Excellent. to and help out. And you feel good helping somebody. No one should be hungry. No one should be cold. And no one should be um, lonely. Lonely is a big thing. Yes. So if you can come and volunteer, we could use help and you won't be lonely. There's a great family out there. Absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Amen. And it's, 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 I'm 
Part of me is speechless, but the other part of me has so many questions about what you're doing and why you're doing it. And I think it's something we need to continue to bring to the public. Oh, I what would love that. I would love that. I would love to uh, perhaps every month, you know, maybe Wouldn't the beginning be of the month or ending of the month, we set a schedule where, mm -hmm. you know, I, we could do the same thing and, you know, let people learn the process of kind of having an idea, yes. filing a bill, yeah. and seeing how it works. I uh, think that would be fantastic. Yeah, it's really interesting. Civics. I, I spent yes. a day in Martha's <laughs> Vineyard last week with mm -hmm. Martha's Vineyard High School students, teaching them how it works. And oh, one God. of the students asked about the jackets. He asked, some, can you get the jackets to Martha's Vineyard, the student? So tomorrow, the students are coming in a police truck to the base, and we're going to load that truck up with jackets and food to go back to Martha's Vineyard. And that is beautiful to me, and that is how it works. You can't do anything better than teaching the young people what's going on in the world. Amen, and, and they want to help and be part of yes. it. And tomorrow, They're it happens. Yeah, and what will that do to that young man and that school, their lives? It's a beautiful thing. Right. right. Well, I am just so pleased to have met you to have talked with you about what we have been doing today and to think that uh, we're going to continue this little journey. I would love it. I will do it every month and um, keep everybody uh, in the loop on what's going on. You know, I am, you know, proud to be your state representative. Use me to help you. There's all kinds of things that we can do with the state. And uh, uh, let's keep talking and let's keep working together. Thank you for all that you do. Proud to do. It's an honor. It's wonderful. And it's 5th Barnstable District. The fight in 5th. <laughs> I love it. Thanks love for having it. me. Very Stephen, grateful. thank you so much for being here. Amen. Thank you. And thank you out there for being here with us. And we hope to meet again real soon.